All right, welcome to this video. Um, in this video, I, I realize I have been, you know, I've been aware of, of mangling in C++ for a number of years, but I guess I, I realized that I just didn't know a whole lot about what was actually happening under the hood. So um, I went a little bit of a, of a mission here to start to fill in a little bit more of that underlying details. And that's what I'm hoping to share with you today in this video. So um, what we're going to take a look at is the basics of mangling, name mangling in C++, and just talk a little bit more detail, kind of fundamental computer science, I guess, uh, look at how mangling like the effect the role that it plays what it allows in c plus plus and then we'll look at some linking and some relocations so let's just go ahead we'll jump right in here um, to get started i have a very simple program i'll make sure to get this added to my github uh, this has a main method as you can see here and two calls to a function called process and this is really where mangling comes into play because this allows for uh, a concept called function overloading that is we have a function name that is the same, but then we have different argument types. So two arguments in both of these implementations, but one is an integer and one is a character. And so what mangling allows to have happened is that when the method is used within, say, our main method here, that allows for the compiler, the linker, and then the resulting executable to know which method is the appropriate one to call. So. Um, we'll go ahead, let's get this sample program compiled. I am going to be using uh, Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio, the developer command prompt. And I think I called this overloading mangling.cpp, C++. So here you can see. Now we have two files that are the output. Uh, we have the executable and we have this object file, this intermediate representation that is then handed off to the linker. And the linker is responsible then for creating finally this runnable executable and so it's this process here that maybe we can we can skip over i know i generally skip over this process this linking stage that's actually done independently um before we get into that object file let's just take a slight detour i'm going to open up ida pro i somehow broke my link for right click context menu so um, i'll just open up the sample and what i want to show you then is when this program runs as you as you can see here, I guess we can go back and look. Um, it's not going to produce any noticeable or appreciable output to the console. Um, but we can go into IDA and we can see that there is, so here we are in main and we have two calls and these calls then represent those functions process. So the first call with integer values, you can see the two arguments there being integers, four bytes based off of those registers. And then the second call, um, here we have our characters and also uh, one byte values based off of those registers. And you'll notice that, of course, these are two separate functions. So we can navigate and this will take us to the location here within the text section where this code is defined, um, similarly with the second one. And, uh, and Ida makes it look like these are calls to these absolute locations within the binary, that, that is these absolute addresses, 14000, 1020. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about the actual instructions here. These are both E8 calls, which means that the four bytes that follow are displacements. Ooh, what happened there? Displacements are relative offsets. And so we'll convert these numbers and make a little more sense of it in the role that the linker plays here in just a moment. So kind of keep this in mind here as we're moving through this video. Now, um, if we go and take a look at this, uh, the object file. And we can actually use a utility that will come with, I believe it comes with Visual Studio, uh, called dump in. And we can provide it with a slash symbols argument. And we need to use or provide the, the object file. And you'll see that this will dump what is, um, what's called the, the symbol table from this cough object. And, and cough is the common object file format. Ooh, I hope that's right. Um, I'm trying to remember that off the top of my head, but it's the file format that's used for these object files that then result in the PE file. So it, that's the, the reason why like a lot of times if we're focusing on file formats, we're focusing on the PE files because as a reverse engineer or a malware analyst, um, we're dealing with the executable content. We don't typically have these artifacts from the malware author's build process. Uh, but you can dig into the specifications here. I'm just going to touch on what's relevant for this particular conversation today. Um, but you'll notice we have 
these two maybe strange looking strings question mark process two ampersands and then y a a h h y a a oh boy excuse me y a h h h ampersand z um, now this is the mangled name so what the c plus plus compiler did was it mangled the name that is it encoded information about the name of the function as well as its return type the type of its arguments and so that's all that information that's encoded into this this mangled string this mangled name um, you can see that it begins with the name of the function and then we have these double ampersands as sort of delimiters. And then as you get into the Y A H H H ampersand Z, this is that embedded type information about the arguments and the type of the return. Now, um, I just generally don't have to spend a lot of time, or I haven't had to spend a lot of time trying to decipher these mangled names because tools, as you can see, dump bin went ahead and demangled those. Tools like Ida, as you'll see throughout this video, there's probably going to be another one or two, also has the ability, the built-in ability to demangle these names. And so I just let those tools demangle for me. Um, LLMs are actually pretty good at demangling these as well. So if you just pasted a raw mangled name into your favorite LLM, it would probably do a pretty good job of demangling that for you. So, but here we can see the demangled. It has, oh, and the calling convention, I forgot that. Um, it has the return type, the calling convention, the name of the function, and then the number and type of the argument. So that was all that decoded information. Um, and of course, as a reverse engineer, this is helpful information to recover when we can recover it because it gives us the prototype. It helps us to identify that information about that, in this case, that particular function. Now, the symbol table is um, generally only going to be present in the cough file, this object file, because it's, it's there to help the linker resolve things like what function should we use and what, what address is it gonna be located in the final executable. And so there's some additional information here that's worth taking note of. Uh, first of all, for our two mangled function names, we have this external. And what that is indicating is that these are, these are either going to be, you know, the linker needs to look external to this object file, or in this case, they're actually global. And so when we compiled our program from source, right, these functions are defined within the scope of this source, along with our main, and this resulted in only one object file. So I'll have another video here where we'll talk about, you know, two object files and how those get combined and stuff. And so what that means is then that it has to go looking for and, you know, resolving the symbol in order to ultimately update in main those addresses or those locations for these functions. Um, you'll also notice off to the side here, we have this column, SECT3, and these are actually offset. So we're gonna get into a little bit more of the details here in just a moment, but this is defining the section as well as then the offset within that section. Okay, so how do we, how do we make sense of this? Or how, how does the linker make sense of it? Because that's really where this step this process is taking place and and where you know in this case this is the, really the only location where these particular mangled names are going to be relevant uh to help with this i'm going to go ahead and we're going to use the o and o editor and i'm going to use this because as you'll see here i'm going to just reload that file uh, we have template information the template is there to parse the cough file format and so you'll see Maybe things that look kind of familiar if you've looked at the PE file format. Uh, we have the section headers, uh, which those look will certainly look familiar to the PE file format. We need to come back to those in just a moment. But then we have, again, two areas that I want to focus on. One is the relocations, and these are relevant to our mangled names and our functions, and then symbol table entries. And here we have symbol at index 8 and 9, and these are our two mangled names. So you can see those right there. Now, if we expand these, you'll see that the value, both of these, one has a value of zero, the other has a value of 20, and these define the offset within the containing section. So this function here will be at an offset of zero in section number three, and section number three, zero based index, zero, one, two, this will be in our text section. Right, and, and that makes sense because it's, it's executable code, it's a function. Okay, very similar with the second function, it'll be in an offset of 20. And we can actually see this 
Uh, IDA, the free versions of IDA do not support disassembling object files. So I, I suppose you could probably find a workaround, but I found that using dump bin here with a disassemble argument was an easy way of doing that. And here we have the disassembly. Here you have the actual mangled name, the decoded mangled name, and then offset zero, and here's the function. All right, and if we jump back into IDA, we could compare this code and we could see, yeah, okay, it's all gonna match up. We could look at the opcode bytes, 895424 and so on. 895424, right? Okay, offset 20. So here's the offset into that section. And you'll see that it is also our mangled name, the decoded, and then the instructions for that particular function. And now if we look at main, you'll see that inside of main, there is the call to those functions, and there's the symbol for that mangled name, but the actual E8, the call, the call operand is zero because it hasn't been linked yet. So right now it's empty, and this is what needs to be updated. And you can see that that's actually for both, both of these call instructions. Compare that to, let's just jump back into IDA for a second. Compare that to IDA where we have Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. Let's, there we go. Where we have relative display, displacements. We have the linker was able to provide the offset to the location of those functions. Okay, so how do we, so what happens next? Well, if we want to see then how these values are calculated, we go back to 010, right? We have our symbols and our symbol tables. We know that that can help to locate where those functions, where those symbols are located. But now we go to, and we wanna look at the relocations. And in this file, there's only two that we're really concerned about. And those are the two relocations that we just looked at for these mangled names. Now, when it comes to relocations, how these work is if you look at the section header and we look at the text section, each, each section will have its own, let me zoom in here number of relocations and the pointer to where those relocations are. And so now when we go and look at those relocation entries, how we know what section they're relevant to is defined here in the section header. So there's two relocations. This begins at offset 226. And if you look at the first relocation, you'll see that it begins at offset 226. So now we know based off of that section header that it's just these two relocation entries that need to be fixed. And we can now expand those, and you'll see that it has two fields here, two members. One is virtual address. Well, I guess it's got three. Um, virtual address, symbol table index, and then the type. So this virtual address, this is saying, okay, at an offset of 4F in the dot text section, this is the location that needs to be updated. This is the relocation that needs to be fixed based off of the symbol at index eight, and this is the type. It's an AMD 64 rel 32, which just means that even though this is in fact a 64 bit binary, the type here is only four bytes. It's, it's a relative address. This means it's going to be a displacement, assigned integer, negative or positive, and it's only gonna be four bytes. And so this virtual address 4F, I think this is easy to see inside of IDA, you'll notice that this first call instruction begins at address 140001104E. So that's 4E from the beginning of that section. 4F would put us right here. The actual operand for the call instruction, and therefore that's how it knows to update these four bytes. Okay, and very similar then with the second relocation. Virtual address, offset hex 58, it's using the second entry from our symbol table, and it's the same rel32, so four bytes. And so virtual address of 58, we can go back into IDA here, and you can see, probably no surprise at this point, at this address, which has the offset of 57, 58 would be C4. Okay, the only thing left to really discuss here is just make sure that it's clear what this data actually represents. And in order to do that, we can just use a calculator here. Um, 
we have to consider the Indianness. So this value is actually FF, 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 AD. Now this would indicate a signed number. So we have two's complement. So I'm just going to use the not. Now that gives us an eight byte value. So we can ignore those leading Fs. This is the only part we need to concern ourselves with. Two's complement, we invert the bits and then we add one. So that would be 53. 53 in hex. So it's a negative 53 from this location. Now, how does that get us to this call? Well, um, this address, 104E, uh, this will be then, the call instruction will be relative to itself. So actually what we have here then is 4E uh, plus, you can see it's a five byte instruction because there's five bytes here, plus five, so it's 53. So the call, from this location, minus 53 takes us to the base of this section or the first, this function that I'd identified for us, right? 14000100, beginning of the text section, right? And then it would be the same thing if we wanted to do the calculations here. We would just invert the bits, add one, and then that would be, uh, that would be a negative value that then is relative to say, okay, EIP or RIP go a negative number of bytes so earlier into that text section in order to begin executing code there and ida recognizes that that displacement does the calculation and that's why we get this or how we get this this like absolute virtual address that it presents to us here okay so um hopefully that helps shed some light on where i'm angling you might be wondering to yourself then like where well where does you know if i gave you this binary um, where would the name mangling come into play? And it doesn't, right? So actually the name mangling is relevant in this case in the object file, but not in the resulting executable. So you wouldn't even see it. Okay, so let's continue this discussion. I've got to make another video here in which we'll talk about creating two different object files and, and how does this process work when the symbols need to be referenced from another object file. And, uh, and that'll be in our next video. So I hope you join me then.